Welcome to the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, July 9th, 2020, uh, 1230 p.m. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with the adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Remote meeting connection, dial-in number is 206 331-4836 and then enter attendee pin. Uh, the attendee pin is 201-783-774 and then the pound. Call in participants should dial in then enter the pin when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using their computers or smartphones for full function participation. Please use the URL to log in to the webinar. Um, HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash webinar dot any meeting dot com forward slash 201 dash 783 dash 774 meeting attendees should mute phones which is star six for landlines uh, unless taking unless asking a question or commenting all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished um, you can mute yourself by star six and unmute yourself by star six um, so we call this meeting tonight, we have a couple of, today, we have a couple of things to, um, to talk about, but the main uh, reason for the meeting is to, to discuss wastewater treatment issues um, and as they relate to breweries. Um, and so uh, the issues that we're having there, ways that we can, we can work to try and get through some of the construction work that we're having and, and long-term um, viability for, for being able to manage the, uh, the flow and the, the BODs. So, um, the meeting, kind of how, how it will work tonight, I'll, um, today as I'm kind of emceeing the meeting, uh, Carolyn is on the line, she's the chair of the select board, but she's phoning in so I can see people here, so I'll be calling on uh, people to speak. So if, if I call on you, um, state your name and, and who you are and you know, kind of what, what you're doing and, and uh, present. And then we always wanna wait till other people are finished um, speaking fully and then, um, then to ask a question or answer. So the first, um, part of the meeting engineers will present the issues um, and then we'll open up the meeting to discussions all questions and comments should be directed to the chair I'm going to be chairing today um, uh, no one is to speak unless called on raise your uh, please raise your hand if using a webcam say your name before speaking so welcome everybody um, and thank you for taking the time to be here and I, I really appreciate uh, Gary and BBC of, of coming to, to um, be a partner in this as we try to find find ways to solve the issues that we're working on, um, Dave, do you, do you, Dave or, or Tony? Um, we could go through and say who's here. Really, I can do the list pretty quick. So I'm Trevor McDaniel, uh, chairing the select board today. Carolyn Ness uh, Shores Ness is on the line as well, and um, Tony De Simone and uh, David Prickett are here. They are engineers for our, uh, the work we're doing from DPC Engineering. Um, Casey Warren, our town administrator. Keith Milne is our uh, Chief uh, Wastewater Treatment um, Superintendent and uh, Kevin Scarborough is the Superintendent of DBW and um, Gary and I'm not sure if Noah is there from BBC as well and I'm not sure if I have anyone else on the line. Jen is um, managing the meeting here as well so I don't know if I've hit everybody so if, if I haven't hit you raise your hand. Uh, this is Dave Wolfram. I'm on the line. Oh great Dave thank you I didn't see you there. And I see a question raised for uh, Gary. There's Gary and Noah's here too, maybe? Uh, no, uh, I've got to go get Noah, but oh. I have a gentleman named Bob Pariso. Oh, hi, Bob. Yeah, the wastewater. Great. Well, welcome. And actually, for Gary, I have to run the Amherst facility for about 30 years. Oh, wonderful. Sounds have good. I have a little experience with wastewater process control. That's and great. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much. Um, so, I guess, Dave, do you want to hit on the, you know, the, I guess present our issues first and then we can go from there? Sure. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. So, just to kind of recap uh, and intro into the discussion, um, Keith, who's here, is the uh, superintendent of the two wastewater facilities uh, in Deerfield. The South Deerfield facility um, has been experiencing um, an increasing amount of uh, high strength uh, wastewater load 
uh, discharges to the plant from the collection system, which are severely inhibiting the facility's ability to treat the wastewater and meet the uh, NIPTES permit compliance. Um, this has been something that's been ongoing for the past several years and uh, without putting words into Keith's mouth, I, I think has been becoming an increasing concern. A um, couple of things that are um, elevating this discussion today are the town is working hard to fix its loan uh, secondary clarifier at the treatment plant through a construction project. Uh, so that also has the operation staff uh, appropriately uh, anxious uh, about discharges that are atypical. Um, the town has done a little bit of uh, sampling uh, and flow analysis in the past. And this discussion relates to our belief and feeling that the discharge from BBC um, is, is causing uh, the operational challenges and we'd like to work through how we can make that better short term uh, through this construction project and also long term in terms of um, this discharge being very unique, high strength uh, and atypical and how the town can work with BBC to uh, accommodate the discharge while meeting its permit and balancing costs amongst the, uh, the sewer users, you know, in a fair and equitable way. So thank you. So so really, um and that's kind of where we, you know, I, I get texts and, and calls, <laughs> frantic calls sometimes from, from the operators at the plant, you know, saying, well, what is going on here? Because we, you know, we will uh, we'll experience, so we test, and, and, and Keith can jump in, but we, we test, if I have this, don't have this right, um, you know, we, we're required to test every, every week and supply, you know, numbers to the state and uh, uh, DEP on, on what we're doing to make sure we're, we're in compliance. and. Um, I believe that testing takes place usually on a Tuesday, um, and, it, and for some reason it seems like Tuesday is the day when we get a massive slug of uh, BOD and hops and yeast and all that kind of kind of rushes down to the plant, um, and then the aerators kind of like an egg beater whip it up, and we get foam that's um, you know a, f a foot thick of of all this stuff, um, and. And there's no air, there's no water, visible clear water left on top of the aerator um, to speak of. And so our, our oxygen goes through the floor um, down to zero. And uh, the, you know, the just nobody, we just can't keep up with it. And then if we get, say we get a thunderstorm or something like that, or another big flush of, of water coming through, that pushes into our only clarifier, which is broken at the moment. Um, and then on through into the contact chamber and out to the river. Um, and, and just the quality of the, um, the water, you know, usually by, by the time it gets out to that contact chamber, it's, it's pretty clear. Um, what's going out to the river lately is just horrendous. I mean, I have videos I can show you just in the, in the testing tubes are just cloudy as, you know, all the suspended solids are there. The only, um, and I think there has been, and maybe Gary, uh, can can weigh in on this too, and I think there's been a change in how brew has happened um, over the years. And um, you know, before you would have you know hops that would go in, and you would then and I'm no brewer, but you would you know you would use the hops, and then you would take them out. Um, and and nowadays, a lot of the brewing I think is done by pelletized, so that that hops doesn't get pulled out; it just kind of stays in that water, and that's kind of what while we've been seeing the, this foam and stuff uh, for many, many years, um, the strength and the, the amount of it in the last few years, and it may be because of a change in, in what, how, how, brew, how beer is brewed, it, it's just so uh, suspended solids are in there, and the only way to take them out is by, um, you know, bugs biologically kind of attacking that and, and then dropping them down. And, so there's no way to kind of sift them off or screen them out. They would plug any kind of filter in a second flat. So we're really concerned and we don't really know how we're going to get through the most, most treatment plants have two clarifiers. So you can go one to the other when you're working on the other. We don't have two. We only have one and that one's broken. So we've um, under an order from DEP are, are, have gone out for a bid and we have a clarifier being made that circular clarifier is going to be taken down late, late summer in fall. 
we will replace that, but uh, we only have these two little tiny temporary things that came with the building back in the 70s to try and get us through. And without uh, ramping back the amount of flow that comes in um, and the time of day that it comes in, um, we'll be missing permit and, and massive fines and uh, we're, we're going to be in a world of hurt. So um, we're hoping, oh, go ahead, Dave. I was just going to kind of piggyback on there on, on things, Trevor. Yep. I mean, we're seeing, based on preliminary data uh, and, and just kind of benchmarking things, that the wastewater strength coming from the brewery appears to be 10 to 20 times that of typical domestic wastewater. Um, you know, oftentimes when there's a discharge of a brewery or some special, you know, waste, you know, there'd be a pretreatment down to domestic wastewater strength. Um, we're just trying to see, you know, to start the dialogue, number one, are there any ways that you can throttle back the rate at which you discharge to the sewer system? And two, are there any things that PBC can do short term to essentially pretreat or, you know, mitigate the, uh, the slug effect uh, of the discharges? Um, Obviously, the town is trying to be proactive. I think it's been very fair with businesses in the past and wants to in the future. They're underway with a $17 million upgrade to the South Deerfield plant. Um, phase one um, is, is in the works, is being designed, planned to be constructed in the next couple of years. And then phase two is, is somewhere in the future to be determined. Um, and ultimately, the, the facility just doesn't have the the heart and the lungs to accommodate these these slugs um, until they get through both of those pieces. So, Trevor, I think you've got mm -hmm. a question. Oh, uh, I yeah, see a question okay. there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is Bob uh, Paraso again. I'm hearing all the information. It'd be really nice if we could see some analytical data on this. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you're BODs and your suspended solids coming into the plant are an awful lot higher than usual, average, or where are they? Do you want me to so, answer that question, Dave? Please, yes. Go ahead, Tony. So I actually have the historical data up. So just to give you the month of October 2019, BOD coming in, October 8th, we had 680 milligrams per liter. BOD coming in, October 15th, we had 1,020 milligrams per liter. BOD coming in, October 21st, we had 508 milligrams per liter. BOD, October 29th, we had 500 milligrams per liter. Okay, so how and much then you keep going down, November, I'm sorry, what was your question? How about uh, the current information? Now, like, do you have anything for June or July? Uh, I don't have that off the top of my in my database. I'm sure Keith does, but the historical data we have for the plant over the last year, the average BOD coming into the plant is about 350 milligrams per liter, which is a very high for a domestic wastewater for this type of system. And uh, you don't have any information on now. Uh, I'm sure Keith does, but he's well, not at the plant right now. So this is, uh, yeah. this, but this is what, you know, I don't know if you can see that. And you're probably hard over the phone. This looks like razor that, sharp, crystal clear. That's what's coming through the plant right now. Last Wednesday, we measured less than one part per million, as I think I've mentioned previously. And the water department had a 1.2 milligram per liter. So we were better than the water that you guys drink. Um, but here's today's effluent going into the river. This is going into the river. If I had uh, to do a TSS test on this today, I would violate my permit for sure. So, and I'm certain we're going to, because and in um, in the um, even gonna come to you know in the background of that video, you can just see the foam just and and it's uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's tough, really tough. So we can get all that data for you. We have, we have tons of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, Keith. The data, the data got really low after the COVID shutdown. We went down to almost historically low levels. I've never seen it that low. It was like old Deerfield. But 
once phase two opening started, you guys started brewing more. Every single week since then has gone up again. It's been slowly but surely going up. And now we're in, like last week, we had 300 and something milligrams per liter coming in. Uh, we've been right around 300 again. We're at that level now. So, and that's you know, just to comment on the data that uh, milligrams per liter as high as 2,000 um, before um, at peak, like May, when you guys usually ramp up production in May, and that's usually our heaviest solids hauling month too we have normally we'll do two to four loads a month out of the plant but in may usually it's nine because of the bod coming into the plant from production uh, so, i saw kevin had a question kevin can, yeah, um, yeah just letting basically you, you know that that the town does own a sampler and i can very easily drop that sampler into the manhole which is um, your facility and two um, uh, residential households are in that section of it. So it would be, it'd be quite easy for me to go ahead and get the uh, sample and send them out to the lab to tell you exactly what everything is. Whoops. Uh, we'll probably also be... go ahead and throw in a flow meter to be able to know exactly how many gallons are coming out at the same time. And we'll get that information for you. Dave, go ahead. You had a question? I was just going to add, Bob had asked about some of the historical data. Um, in addition to what Tony and Keith had mentioned about these very elevated BOD influent loads, especially for a plant that has a fair amount of II, uh, infiltration inflow coming into the system, we also observed, um, based on a limited number of tests per Kevin's point, uh, BOD concentrations around 3,000 milligrams per liter uh, on that stretch of sewer where BBC and two residential connections are discharged. So the data is real. Um, you know, this is a high strength wastewater. It's not an issue of whether it's happening or not, um, got a talented operations team. It's just now it's time to figure out both short-term and long-term solutions. Yeah, how we can how we can help help each other through. Uh, there's a question. Yeah. Yeah. I think I see your hand. Yeah, I can't see you, but I saw your hand. Go ahead. Hand. Go ahead, Bob. See, we don't have any information on how much BOD is actually coming out of here and mm -hmm. what the total flow into the plant is and yeah. that's yeah we can help with that characteristic also that we'd have to share because sure we have to know how much of a contributor we are and oh. it would be helpful to have a composite of sample course. out of here and yep. uh have you done any micro biological analysis on your activated sludge and all that foam that you have because this area I ran the plant in Amherst for 30 years and it's critical that you have your plant within the operating parameters where you're supposed to be because if you get a we, we are we have amazing conditions at the plant right now as a matter of fact I'm running a proprietary process through Drylet LLC using their aqua assist and i've been uh, using that now for over two years it has saved our bacon if we didn't have that we would never have been able to do what we've done under the conditions that we've had to face from the high strength waste coming into the plant um we are it is the most fine-tuned it's ever been in its history right now and we're, we're really uh we're, the effluent often uh, without any pass through from these explosions that come on Tuesdays uh, is usually one to three milligrams per liter on our effluent weekly and the same for TSS with zero E. coli amazing settling and our numbers are lower than the drinking water in Deerfield for effluent when BBC discharges one of those heavy amounts but it comes rolling into the plant when we're sampling not only some of that passes through, but it skews our numbers and it makes our whole monthly report look like non-representative non because you're discharging high strength waste. We're cycling air too. So some of that is getting through and it shows up. When you do that on a Tuesday, our numbers will go from one to three milligrams per liter up to 20, just like that. Um, when we don't get it, we're one to three milligrams per liter. So, oh, 
Dave, you had your hands up, and then I'll go back to Bob. I, I just want to listen. I mean, we work for about 20 to 25 of the Western Mass communities that have, you know, treatment plants, and Deerfield gets 10 pounds out of the five-pound bag every day of the week. Um, Keith has experience running much larger, much more sophisticated plants in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, this is not an issue of this plant not performing adequately. It's it's redlining because of these loads coming in. I think we really need to focus. We're happy to, as Kevin said, uh, gather some supplemental flow and constituent uh, concentrations and loads to share that. But in the meantime, for BBC, we need to understand what can you do now uh, to help attenuate the rate at which you discharge, and is there anything you can do to help pre-treat prior to the discharge uh, to the municipal sewer system? That's really where we need to start today. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I'll let uh, Gary speak to this, mm -hmm. but in our the conversations, I mean, I don't know an awful lot about the brewery, how it operates, you know, but he told me that they have three reactors. To one reactor, you add the grain into, and that the ferments, then the one after that, you add the hops into, and he removes a hyper percentage of the hops after he's through in that reactor and a hyper percentage of the grain in the fermenter. And that is all uh, sent off into a farmer. So yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, yeah if I may, sure. um, uh, and Noah has just arrived. So, hey, Noah. Uh, We've been trying to side stream as much of our BODs as possible. And I mean, that goes from all of our grain to all of our yeast to uh, when we're done transferring the beer, the product, uh, we have some slurries left over that we've also been side streaming. And we're really trying to take as much out of the stream as possible. Um, my, my only question is, you know, we've been brewing uh, I, I hear Keith saying that you do your testing on Tuesday and, and that's where everything shows up. But I mean, we're, we're brewing four to five days a week. And mm -hmm. um, are you getting those numbers every day? We don't test every day. But I, mean, I didn't want you to do anything on Tuesday because that seems to be when we get pepper bombed with the largest discharge of all. And then it's only when I make a stink that it stops for at least a little while. But, um, you know. But, but, I mean, this foam issue happens occasionally or it's happening? Uh, every as long as you guys are brewing, we have the foam all the time. But the explosion of foam happens when we get a slug discharge from you. And it might be happen washing out. afternoons right after lunch. And it's happened at least half a dozen times in the last year. So, so we have one of those nuclear foam events like Trevor has on film. So we're trying to find a way to, um, so is there a way, I don't know how your process works, but is there a way to throttle back when you rinse out and, and, and low, you know, can it be put into a tank? Can it be fed off overnight at, you know, 40 gallons an hour instead, or a minute versus all at once? It's those all at once things that just, you just kill our system and we have to take you know days to bring it back so we're trying to find ways to in the short term i mean the long term we're going to have to look at you know cost of either pre-treatment at your plant or um charges to cover the expense at at our plant um but in the short term getting us through this construction for this first phase when we pull that clarifier off we just we got to find a way to slow that down to more of a trickle or a steady stream instead of an all at once slug. And I don't know how that process works at a brewery. Is there a way to make that happen? Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I, Gary now, he has three trains actually operating. So he doesn't drain them all at once. He'll mm -hmm. drain one train and then he removes all of the grain and all of the hops and he, he yep said that only a small percentage of that is actually washed into the sewer. And then after he's through, he does one more train and then another train. I mean, certainly 
we could work with you on a time of travel and everything, but I'm also interested how much is that contribution in, in terms of your mm -hmm. total plant flow. The what? strength is 45% of oh. our total from you guys. Yeah. 45%. So we're trying to... Bob, I have a question on that and confirm that. Well, Dave can, have, can handle... But can who had a question? Here. Somebody had a question? I do. Tony does. Oh, okay. go ahead, Tony. Uh, Bob, you talk, you talk about the fermentation process, which is anaerobic digestion, and I know you ran the Amherst plant. I don't know if you have anaerobic digesters at that plant or not, or if you've ever run a if you've ever run a facility that has anaerobic digesters, when you process the anaerobic digestion sludge, you're pulling all the sludge material out, but the liquid itself is still loaded with high concentrations of nitrogen, high concentrations of BOD. So yes, I do agree when you go through your process on the brewery, when he pulls all those hops out and gets rid of them and sends them off for cattle feed, feed that's great, but the liquid from that digestion process is loaded with organics. It's the same as a anaerobic digester on a biological treatment plant. Soluble BOD. You well, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, I, as Trevor indicated earlier, and I uh, had a talk uh, with Keith, the, the brewing process has changed over the past couple of years uh, because of the consumer base and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And we are using pellets more than we ever have. Um, and speaking with Keith, you know, I, I started learning what he's up against in terms of when these pellets dissolve, you end up with so much more surface area than you did when they were just compacted into their original form. Um, we do have a centrifuge that we do try to clean up uh, some of that. Um, and we can certainly uh, work to try to schedule uh, our waste going down the drain at opportune times that you would suggest. Mm -hmm. Um, I would really appreciate that. You know, the centrifuge thing is a great idea. However, suspended solids can only be removed through biological treatment. That's why they're in suspension. That's why we need aeration tanks and biological treatment because those types of particles will never lose their suspended characteristic until they're assimilated and adhered to the surface area of a biological organism. It's taken into its cell body for food. That's why we have a treatment plant. So I guess what we'll what we'll do is um, we'll work on that the you know amount that can be taken out when you know discharged when when are the optimal optimal times to do that um, you know cost structure all of that we're going to put together in the next um, short while here and then we can get you know we'll do the sampling as well so that you know at the plant and you know, at, at, um, at the manhole, what we're, what we're dealing with, with flow and concentration, all of that stuff. So um, I think that's just going to be, you know, we're just going to have to work together over several, several meetings here to try and come up with ways to try and get us through the short term and then look at long term how, how we handle, you know, what strength comes out, what we can handle, you know, until our plant is up and running. Um, uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a, a rough ride through the summer and the fall. We're going to need all the help we can get. Um, uh, Dave, and then Gary. I think just in the meantime, um, the conversation about switching trains and stuff. Minimally, if there's anything you can do with thrall and valves back and training vats and tanks a little slower than you typically would, even stuff like that might help a little bit. Yeah. So and to Keith's point, maybe we can work out something to try to optimize the time of the day, Keith, maybe a little bit at night. I don't know. I mean, that's really for you to, to help dictate. But short term, we'll gather data. You try to do those sorts of things, reconvene and figure out, you know, where we're both at, yeah. with resources and, and things and take next steps. And Gary, you had you had your hand up too. Yeah, so I just want to say that, I mean, there is a standing invitation for any of you gentlemen and ladies, if, if you'd like to come up and see the process. I mean, great. it would be greatly appreciated 
um, if you could come in and, you know, there may be some obvious things that we're missing yep. uh, that we could institute right away. But as I said, we've been really trying to, to side stream uh, as, as much as we can. And Thank it you. seems like the pelletized hops may be uh, candidate number one to, you know, see if there's something we can do to, yeah. to augment. And, uh, That'd be know, great. That would be can we aerate for you? I mean, if we were to bubble oxygen into there on the way out, is that any help? No, it's an over. It's not good. Uh, wow. It's our oxygen. Not the level you would need. Yeah. You're talking well, big electrical for that. Geez, how did it look this week? I wasn't there. I he's a, been there. You can tell by his vacation. comfy chair that he's on vacation. Well, we have to right now. Brian? Uh, Gary, I think. Areas, yeah. 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 What is the flow rate at the plant, anyhow? I don't have any idea. Yeah. We average normally about 400,000 uh, a day on you know, normal flow. Right now it's low because we've had kind of a drought condition. And then recently we've had some rain, so it's kind of back up. It's floating around 300,000, 320 right now. But we've been as high as 1.2 million. Uh, really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, when we get a lot of rain, like, what, what was it, last year or the year before, where it rained from July all the mm -hmm. way through the end of the fall, we were up, we were flow, we averaged, I believe it was 920,000 for that month, for one of those months. And that's over our design. I mean, our design is 850. So, yeah. Uh, but normally 400,000, about half our design flow is our average. And that's okay. with the INI we had, the INI issue we had. Do you know what your F to M the ratio is? Or you no, no just... that's a floating target. We don't operate that way. Uh, we don't operate by F to M. What do you operate on? We operate what on... Control parameter. What's that? What is your con control well, we, parameter? Sludge age and somewhat F to M, but uh, a lot of visual too. And yeah. historical. I know right where my mixed liquor needs to be for the most part during certain times of the year. Um, in order to treat just about anything that comes in. And right now I have quite a latitude because of the bugs I'm using, allow me to run a much higher mixed liquor for a relatively low strength sludge, but I have to, because I never know when I'm getting a BBC superpower sludge. So I have to have enough bugs to handle that, while at the same time maintain not too much because when you guys don't discharge on a regular basis, again, we have our, our BOD goes down enormously. Which I saw because of COVID, the shutdown. So I, th you know, I, that was... I think that um, you're, Bob, you're in. Answer that question. Go ahead. Hold on. Sorry. I was going to say, Bob, to answer that question, the plant typically operates uh, on one aeration basin with an, a solids retention time of about 10 days. Okay. Is that your sludge age or is that your MCRT or? It's an aerobic SRT. Yeah. So, so only the only the volume in the aeration tank. I'm not taking into account any volume in the clarifiers, and that's basically just based on yeah, uh, we don't uh, keep BOD removal. We keep a foot or two at most for a facultative zone, and even that's not needed because we're cycling air. And we create a facultative zone every other hour. So, and we're so we this, this is nitrify and denitrify most of the time with no zoned aeration, just one egg beater. We're doing that. Have you looked at so your when you guys were? Have, I looked, at have you looked at your microagnives? Yeah, we have a nice healthy population. Really nice healthy population. Do you it's have fantastic. any filamentous or? We have a, we have a little bit of that. To, yeah, a little bit, but not much. Just enough to help uh, grab enough and clarify and, and, and do a nice settling. The settling like I've never seen before. What is the? set a lawmeter after a half an hour do you remember well that's that depends on how much mixed liquor i decide to carry in the system and that goes up with my concentration but normally for us a normal svi is considered high by most people our normal svi is 150. that's what we run a 150 svi well gary i really appreciate the opportunity to have us you know come in and maybe maybe there's things that we see that you know could help get us through these next you know three to six months as we get 
get going here, is, and and then we'll we'll work on all the other stuff. But that would be that would be very helpful if we could if we could get in and look at different ways that how your your process works, and can we throttle back and like you know let it flow overnight kind of thing, so it's not so. Um, you know, so it's it, it's just not all coming at once. Uh, Kevin, you have your hand up. Yeah, I have just a question. It's an in general. Would it help if we? And this is out to Dave and both uh, Dave and Keith. Would it help if we actually had a uh, production schedule? Would that be beneficial to you, Keith? That way. Well, you know, I just, a, better? a quick question: When you guys discharge, is it continuous? Is it in slugs? I mean. Somebody has given us, Matt, really heavy slugs of high-strength stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, one question is, um, being that I don't speak your language, what do you consider a slug? A larger-than-normal volume. I mean, normally, you know, there's just this, if you guys are sort of producing and there's this stuff going down the drain all the time or is it going into a tank and then the tank gets, the valve gets opened or... Uh, Keith and the rest of the gentlemen mm -hmm. here, you guys, I mean, like, you need to come here and see what's happening and go, going down the drain uh, because this guessing game on either side is not going to get us anywhere. We're, I'm telling you, honestly, we're doing the best. Do you know we how many gallons you discharge? Excuse me, let me, excuse me, let me finish. You need, we need clear evidence as to what's coming out of the the building and we have two monitor we have two monitoring points that you guys can check and if yep. you guys want to come here and check it out and see how we're operating we in do full operation right now we'd be glad to have have you but thank the you back and forth anecdotal is uh yeah it's not no anywhere. we'll get we'll get you all that information and we'll have all the data thank and we'll you. come up with it with the pricing and 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 plan going forward that's no problem i appreciate the opportunity to get in and see how you're doing maybe there's things that we see that we can help, you know, adjust that flow to get us through these next three to six months. That that'll be wonderful. Um, okay. Um, so just well, oh, sorry. go ahead, Gary. Uh, sure. It's uh, the volume of flow is one issue, and then BODs is a second issue. The, are well, they tied together? They're t I would say, you know, just speaking from a layman's term here, it's, it's a lot of it has to do with the BOD level. It's not so much what, how much comes in. I mean, it's tough when it all, I mean, if, if it was all clear water all at once, no problem. But if it's, if it's large chunks with heavy laden material, that's when we get the problem. If it's heavy is difficult to deal with, but if it was at a slower rate, and more consistently like drained, then, then we can handle that better. It's just the, it's the high volume, high strength kind of all at once that's really tough. Uh, and help. there were no problems reported this week because we've been in full operation this week. Yeah. I, Have there been any reported issues? Well, it's, it, it's a constant, no, it's constantly going on. So yes, I, I, I don't have the, you know, the video from this week because Keith's on vacation, but I got a video every week, <laughs> pretty much. So yes, uh, I'm sure it's still happening. We, we can get you all that. I mean, really, the key, like you said, Noah, the key is to get you that data, and oh, I, we'll supply all that for you. Yeah. This is, this is Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. I just, I'd like to. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I'd like to follow up um, with Kevin's suggestion of the production schedule because that makes really a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Would be, now, and, and if we can narrow it down to, you know, what is the biggest offender, maybe there would be a way to bleed it off and take it up to um, the digester and omics or something like that. You know, some, maybe we can come up with some alternative to address it. So I, I think the production schedule, a visit, site visit would be helpful. And then we'll, and then we'll get you data as well. I think a, a next step is just the exchange of data. If we get some information from you on production schedule and then we can visit and help and look at how, how you get rid of things and then we can supply you with all the data that is coming out of the, out of the facility and, and, and at our plant so we can correlate both of those. Um, that seems like the best next right. step. Yeah. I think 
think point source observation out of the brewery would be the ultimate. Yes. Uh, you know, cherries in, guys. This is what's coming out of our our building. Yeah. Yep. And, we have some of that, but it's a little bit. How many times it happens every day? Yeah. Has to be, yeah, that of has course. To be statistically analyzed enough, you know. Yes, you we give you all that. That's fine. And, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the burden of proof falls on us for that, according to the. Uh, the uh, well, we're not worried about that right now. What we're trying to do is come up with a solution. So we all need to get together on the same page. It's not. I understand. Yeah, but I mean, asking us not to um, produce any given day of the week is potentially putting us in, you know, a very bad shape for business. Yeah, and, and it's a it's asking us a lot of money. No, we're not not just doing, just like that. that. All right. Let me. So just let me mediate. Um, Noah, same with us. So it, it's costing us thousands of dollars as well. So that's why we want to work together and say, how do we make you profitable and the town profitable? Because we need you in our community and we need our community to, 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 to be able to function and handle what you produce. You know, it's, it's not that, you know, you, you produce something that has a heavy cost on the operation of the, on the, on the wastewater treatment plant. So we got to find a way to work together to go, okay, You've got to be profitable and successful and grow, and we need to be able to handle that. And so we just kind of learn from each other on what you what you output. These are ways you could help us in the meantime, and then we, we figure all of that out together. Um, Kevin, you have your hand up? Yes. Uh, Noah, quick question. Is there a, a manhole between your facility and the main at the road? Yes. You can okay. well, it. Then that's where I can go ahead and I can put my sampler, and then that way I'm getting no mixture of any other residential area. Correct. Uh, Great. That, that worked out perfect. perfect. So, so what I would do is I would draw, just ask for a, um, a right of entry. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form that I'm sending off to you um, that will allow me to come in there and, and come and take samples and come and go as I need to to retrieve my samples, to send them out to... Uh, uh, to the lab to find out where we're at. And then okay, if, the, if there's, uh, go ahead, Gary. The, where Noah just uh, spoke of is outside the building and it is, uh, I believe, a four inch sewer pipe. Is okay. that gonna be big enough for you to get your equipment in? Yeah, got a thumbs up from Kevin. Yep, okay. two thumbs up, <laughs> good, um, okay. So um, any other questions anyone has? I mean, I think the next step here, we'll call another meeting, of, uh, but, but in the next you know, short time, we'll, we'll get some things together. We'll maybe visit if we can and um, get you data and you give us data. We'll, we'll kind of work at this together from both sides to try and find a solution. That'd be great. One. Go ahead, Bob. Do you have any other industry around here that could be also a contributor? Not that we can think of, you know, we have the schools open, you know, but they have been shut for a while. Um, I, I don't know of any other manufacturer using that kind of, we used to have Cane's Pickle. So we had a whole, this whole issue with Cane's at the same time. So they had a heavy BOD load and, you know, we had, we had a cost structure set out with them and, um, you know, they could only produce, you know, they would let go at night, you know, at, at a steady, tr you know, trickle kind of thing to, to be able to handle that. So we maybe take some of those lessons to figure out how we can handle this one. Kevin? Uh, as far as I know, the only other industry basically that we have in town um, is plastics and they recycle their own plastics so they're just using it as a cooling agent. Okay. Um, most of our, our you know, we, we did go through, um, I'm gonna say a year ago, and basically we visited every place that's got a grease trap to make sure we don't have any problems with grease. Um, you know, we've, we've been trying to do our due diligence to make sure that we've looked at the different contributing factors. Um, and we really haven't been able to come up with much. Um, you know, it, it, I'm not really sure where else um, these solids are coming from, per se. Um, but, you know, basically our industry in town is you guys in plastics and uh, a handful of restaurants and the rest is for the most part pretty much uh, residential yankee candle no 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 production here uh 
not only that, when those slugs come in, it smells like IPA. It smells <laughs> like whatever it is. You can smell it. I mean, it's no. I think where it's coming from. Bob's got his hand up again. Yes, in uh, terms of grease and oil and all of those things, historically the the brewery industry is a minimal co mm -hmm. contribute to that. So. Right. Not much grease. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Not much oil or grease or any of those right. things. So that's right. We'll work on our end to. Thank you. Yeah, what I was just trying to get at is, is, is we're, we're, we're looking for everything. Is what I was trying to get at. Is we're yeah. not we're we're not trying to focus just on you because we're not by no means. And I hope I'm speaking for the town. Is we're not trying to put you out of business by any means. We're just trying to be able to see what we can do, work hand in hand, to be able to make this thing work for both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you know, obviously, you know, we love having you in town. Um, we really don't want you to leave. Um, you know, but we have to make sure that you know we don't get ourselves in trouble either. So, so when I when I say that I'm looking at everything, and I'm not saying that you guys are producing the grease, I'm just letting you know that we I have gone as far as I possibly can to to investigate where any type of discharge could be being put into our system, which ends up down at Keith's plant. Is all I was trying to get. Yeah. Airfield's plant. <laughs> Trevor, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Bob, you said you used to run the Amherst facility, correct? That's right. Yeah. So when you would have school in versus when school was out, would you notice a substantial change in how your plant, what's coming in, and how the plant operated? <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> Loading would drop in half in January and in the oh, yeah. summer. Yeah. So we would have to take half of our tankage offline. That's reason I'm asking about the F band and all those things, we would have to immediately react. Yeah. Oh, wastewater yeah. treatment yeah. Yeah. it's almost like brewing wine. If you got the right amount of food, yeah. you get the right organisms. If yeah. that out of whack, you get vinegar and it doesn't well, the reason I was the reason I was going there with that question is when when the brewery is down, we notice a similar phenomenon at the treatment plant. So, like, when you guys were closed in March, April time frame. Of time. Just, I'm just saying, we see a difference in both what's coming in and how the plant reacts. And it's, it's a similar correlation. So that's why when we say we did an exhaustive search in the system, that's kind of where we came up with what we came up with. A, that's only ever happened the pandemic happening right now everything before this pandemic we were up 25 to 30 percent every week dropping bod's down the drain at a level that is like non-existent now like everything we do is pretty much side street any any solid yeah there's some diluted soluble bod but i mean that is pretty much it and this is since when? Well, if you were there this week, I'd like to see what's going on in the oh, world. Oh, so it's just this week. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Oh, here, here's what doesn't make sense is that we don't have the data. We don't have the data coming out of our point source. And, I mean... Oh, we do have the data. We do. You do? Oh, okay. We have lots of data. I mean, oh my God. That's all we do is generate data. <laughs> Sorry about that. We work on each band of wow. Term. Okay. That's quite a statement. Low rate. All right. So, um, D left everything. I think we need to do some homework. Yeah, great. And yeah, we'll, we give you, we'll give you our info. Um, we'll take yours. And um, any, any other questions? Uh, nope. Carolyn, do you have anything? You got enough? Okay, good. I'm um, sorry I had to step away for a minute. I'm going to have a call. Um, I'm fine, Trevor. I just, I just want to make sure we're facilitating sharing of everything. So yes. We can all put our minds on it. Absolutely. It's a hard, hard issue to deal with, so we've got we to gotta, we gotta use everybody's knowledge to do that. So, um, well, thank you all very much. I know we have, uh, and this is a select board meeting, so we do have, I think, one other item that Casey wanted us to.
to hit on. So if you could hang on, uh, Carolyn or anybody else is welcome to stay. But <laughs> I really thank you for your time today, and we'll we'll get back in touch um, shortly and and work together to try and find a solution here. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, Gary. Thank you, thank you Noah. Uh, if you want to call me to schedule a meeting oh. or a tour operations, please. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Gary. I really appreciate that offer. And thank you, Bob, for being here. Um, thank you, Noah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, everybody else. Thank you, Dave and, and uh, thank you. Thanks. Anthony, thank you. Keith. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Okay. Have a good have a good day. Carolyn, I guess we have, um, and, and Dave is on the line as well. Um, so our next. How do we get off this thing? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a minute. But, you can just hit the X at the top of your screen there. Or, or close your laptop. That works too. Yep. Um, anybody? Uh, okay. So okay. Um, so just wanted to. Um, we had a board of health uh, reports updates. We do want to hit on Triple E a little bit of an update while we had had the floor. Um, Carolyn, do you want to hit on that a little, or do you have anything with COVID yeah. openings? Uh front, I just want to mention that um, this is highly unusual, um, and I people need to pay attention because it's highly unusual. It's early in the year. It's like six weeks early. Uh, it normally happens in the southeast part of the state, and to have it happen in Franklin County, to catch mosquitoes carrying Tripoli is um, very unusual. So um, the Mosquito District, we're, we're having a meeting tomorrow. We're meeting on Monday. We're putting out extra traps. Um, we're doing, you know, trapping and doing as much as we can. Um, what is also unusual is normally your melanora and Coolix mosquitoes are the bad ones, and they're the ones that carry the disease. But it's the perturbans that were both caught in Orange and Wendell. So hmm. um, those are normal, like sort of nuisance mosquitoes that are very common. So we're, we're trying to figure out. That's a little what, frightening. What this means? Yes, what this means. So the community really needs to make sure that they use bug spray and um, patrol their yards and dump the water and, you know, that kind of thing. We'll have Kevin, because we have had rain, Kevin will have the highway crew, you know, putting out the BTI discs, you know, the little dunks in the catch basins and, um, you know, uh, we're doing treatment behind um, old deer field which is usually a vector there. So um, we're doing some kind of action, but people, again, just like wearing masks, washing your hands, and keeping watching your distance between people, this is going to be one of those summers, I think, where we're all going to have to pay attention. Yep. So Sounds I just wanted good. to mention that. Okay. That, um, the state is doing, for COVID, the state is continuing. I mean, there are, were some deaths yesterday, um, and there's continued hospitalizations, but our new cases are still in the 100, 150 um, person range every day. There's a lot more testing. Our testing level, you know, the infection rate is still very low. Good. So um, it's circulating, uh, but people are paying attention. So continue to wear your mask. Three yes. W's. Wear a mask, watch your distancing, and wash your hands. Thank you. We're going to, you know, keep it. We'll, keep, we'll beat it. So um, it's just really important. Yep. The most other important thing is, is if you are not feeling well, um, you know, and you think it is, it is COVID-related, please stay home and, mm -hmm. and isolate yourself and, and um, let someone know. Uh, you know, call your doctor or whatever. And um, because this is, you know, we, we will work with you to get trace all your contacts and um, make sure that people stay safe. Yep. So that's it. Um, okay. And then, so there was one. Now, was there a uh, go ahead? Was there a trace contact in Deerfield just recently that I see? Yeah. The Deerfield Academy had a staff person, um, and they uh, unfortunately they came to work for a couple of days, and they shared an office. So the, both persons are in quarantine. The the only other so item. We're working on we're working on communication as how this has been discussed since March. So how, how does this, you know, not, you know, how does this person not be conscious of the need to stay home? So we're working on that right now. 
The only other thing we have on the agenda was um, our letter of support for um, Chris Curtis. Um, and this, I'll just kind of read this quickly, but uh, this is July 9th, 2020. Ari, the National Wild and Scenic River designation for the Deerfield River that we talked about a few, um, a few meetings ago. So, dear Mr. Curtis, the Deerfield Select Board is writing to express our support for designating the Deerfield River as a National Wild and Scenic River. On May 20th, 2020, the Deerfield Select Board met to discuss this issue and voted unanimously to support seeking congressional authorization and funds for a planning study to elevate whether Deerfield River can be designated as a National Wild and Scenic River. The Deerfield River is one of our region's most beautiful and special natural treasures and it helps define the character of the town of Deerfield. The Deerfield River deserves national designation for many reasons. It features perhaps the best whitewater boating and rafting in Massachusetts, some of the best uh, dry fly fishing or wild trout in the east, and has great historical significance with the Mohawk Trail, uh, a principal historic Native American travel route running along the river. We understand that designating the Deerfield River as a national wild and scenic river would protect the river from federally permitted dams and provide much needed federal funding for river management. We look forward to working with the Deerfield River Watershed Association as this process advances to protect the Deerfield River. Sincerely, Carolyn Shores Ness, Trevor D. McDaniel, and David W. Wolfram, Deerfield Select Board. So I'd make a motion to, to sign this letter. Any further discussions? All um, the... I'd just like to say that the conservation district is the Franklin Conservation District um, uh, has its river access forum. We're putting together the report and we're hoping to be the basis of a ten to fifteen million dollar ask to um, help uh, improve the river access up and down the Deerfield River like the water river yeah. area. And, Great. Um, Yep. Um, anyway, uh, this will be very helpful. It will h help the argument. So I just think that yep. this would be very good. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? No. I Trevor. Yeah, I, 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 Trevor McDaniel. Thank you very much. So um, when you guys are in next, um, you could sign, or I don't know if you want to use a stamp, but. Um, I'll leave a copy for um, Casey here and Jen. Yeah, okay. Um, I so Trevor, one other if you can sign it. I did, yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just had one an unanticipated thing. Um, uh, apparently Joe Kennedy is putting together a bill. Um, he announced that he was working on it um, to do um, infrastructure, uh, municipal inf and state infrastructure. And, um, public works project. So I, I, just because we don't know, I mean, I would anticipate not having any more MVP money until next April, mm -hmm. but who knows? So I was hoping we could, we as a board would encourage Dave um, Prickett to get their, the, um, you know, the tank Anything that we were going to do for climate change to make it more resilient, to get those plans done immediately, either for the MVP program or this potential bill. And then also just, I don't know where we are on all our plans, but um, we, we should invest in getting a little bit ahead of the curve so that we could put our um, sewer treatment plant in as a project if there was money available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I know we were talking about, I mean, I just didn't know, I, I was just hoping to encourage the engineering on that kind of stuff. I know Kevin has been working on, um, you know, some ideas for River Road. We should really try to figure that out. Yep. Um, Mass, and Mass Works is open now. Until, right. And it's due uh, August 28th. So, um, you know, we were successful getting the Mass Works um, grant last time because river we you know presented the river road as a vital north south route if 
um, you know, uh, Route 5 was shut down or 91 was shut down and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, I would say that that would be, our, you know, we should use the same argument. Mm. Okay. So, um, I just I felt like we just needed to be moving on along on those things. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely talk talk to Dave about that too and see where he's at. Oh, I, uh, just to update this board, um, we had a meeting last night with um, Jeff from um, I think Steyer from uh, Berkshire Design on the Common about kind of. I gave him some data, and I think he's probably going to need some data from. Well, he can pull it off the web for some of the uh, GIS mapping, and um, uh, gave him some information on the Leary lot. And uh, I wanted to get him information on the tree boxes where those were planned to go, because uh, I'd like to have them uh, put kind of a more of a holistic plan on what we're doing for downtown. But really, our focus is on the common. So, but just how it intersects with all the other spots in the complete street stuff. So, you know, over the next week or so, I just wanted to get him whatever data we have and plans or whatever we have on that stuff. Um, so that he could bring okay. something forward, a proposal to the board to, um, to see if we want to, you know, work with them in the future to do some of this work. So, um, Perfect. I'll get, oh, that's wonderful, Trevor. Wonderful. Yeah, it was a good, good meeting. He's a great guy, and I think we'd have a good, good opportunity working with them. So we'll see. That's all I have. Great. And uh, so our next meeting is uh, next Wednesday, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Well, have a good week, everybody. Anything else? Anybody want yeah. to talk about? Thank you for all you know for coming together on this BBC meeting. It, you know, it looks like the data is king here. We'll have to just get all that stuff together for them, and um, yep. and we'll get some data from them, and we'll we'll work together as a team to get it done. Okay. Um, I Oh, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Casey, do we have to take any type of votes on the uh, electric? Um, yeah. What electric on the aggregation? So the electric, he's talking about the aggregation and the, and the um, I'm trying to frame it, David, the, the connect with our street light. Oh, yeah. is it different than what we were doing? Um, well, no, what, what David noticed is with the change to the, at, with the aggregation going into place, mm -hmm. we could see significant increases in our street lighting costs. So he asked me to check in with Denise Allard and okay. Mark Capadonna oh. about this. Um, and we were, I think so the, I have two emails from her, but also the, uh, wasn't the, uh, Energy Committee working on a grant to get switch that stuff over to LED. I don't know where that's. Yes, at. but this doesn't affect it. This is a rate question. So oh, gotcha. when when Denise sent me the email, so we, what we did was we identified what accounts this affected, and there's 12 accounts that are affected. Um, so what Denise suggested we do is opt out of all the accounts, and she can communicate that. So. David, do you want to do you want to take the vote on that as an unanticipated item? Well, I just want to make sure you know bring it up to the board. Maybe we can vote on it next Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, because I okay. People have what's going on, and they can ask more questions in, in between. Yeah, that'd be great because I didn't, I wasn't okay. aware of any of this, so it'd be good to get get yeah, some knowledge. Yeah, we're just gathering the information. On. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, David. That All right. I'll put this on the agenda. Go ahead, David. The streetlight cost was going to double. Really? The way it was. Yeah. Huh. So, just had to be careful with that. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for keeping. I don't, how, how did you see that? When I finally got the whole breakdown of what the different rates were. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a significant difference between the outgate and what we were actually paying that resource. Oh, okay. Huh. For street lights so, only, but not, but not for anything else, right? Uh, I'm confused. Well, it oh. depends on whether they put us into commercial or not. If, because the residential was the only one that was a benefit. Oh. All the other ones were not. Hmm. Interesting. 
But they didn't share that data with us. I'll forward it. No, they didn't. Well, why not? They said it was all the same rate. We were supposed to do our work. No, they were. No, we hired a consultant. They were supposed to tell us what we were doing. They didn't provide multiple rates for multiple businesses. That was not ever told to us. Yeah, the only one so we as a it, it, uh, We'll have to talk a little bit case. about that. So, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, David. Yeah, thanks for, for spotting that, because that was in the weeds. Okay. I didn't notice it until I got the letter in the mail. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't notice that on the letter that they were... So commercial was going to be more money. Yes. Yeah. But residential was not. Hmm. Yeah. Do our businesses know that? Or did we just do the mail? I was looking to see if we got a letter, and I don't think uh, we did. Uh, so, yeah, we need to dig into that and then maybe notify our businesses that they should be opting out then. I mean... Unless long term it's going to be less money, but I, I just I had expected our consultants to kind of make that a little clearer. They did, did not in any of the meetings I had, and I wasn't in a ton of them, but the last couple when we decided that was not made clear. Yeah. So, okay, so we'll do a little homework on that. Thank you, David, for fi finding that out. Yep. Anything else? No. Motion. I don't Oh yeah, no problem. It's good to good to hear you all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you get me off the beach today. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. Get back to the beach. Get back sorry. to the beach. <laughs> no, I've had no, no. I'm not supposed to be on the beach. Oh okay, so I did you a favor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, have a good weekend, everybody, and rest of the week. And um, thank you all. Yeah. A motion to adjourn. Thank you. Fine. Yep. Second that motion. Wait. Well, wait. Somebody wait, said wait. 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 All right, we're not ready to adjourn I yet. I think you didn't take a vote. Let me just check something. On what? Um, okay, hold on. We get talking. You did finish the I don't think support. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I we did vote on the support. to make sure that we got all the votes that were open. Yep. So the support letter was voted. Yes. And then we did it. David asked about a motion, yeah. and I'm going to add the aggregation question to the agenda for the 15th. That's perfect. Yep. Okay, thank All you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn. Aye, Trevor Aye. McDaniel. Aye. Good. Okay, well, have a good Aye. week, everybody. Take care. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you, Trevor. Thank Dad. you. Bye. Bye.